guys, it's Jenna. In today's video, we are going to be going over the new Makeup by Mario foundation. This is the Surreal Skin Foundation. I'm so excited to get right on into this because I picked up two shades today. Really, really wasn't sure exactly what my shade would be, but luckily they are in Sephora stores as well as online right now. It is also on his website if you're interested, but this is the new Surreal Skin Foundation, so let's get into the full day wear test, application, and review. All right, let's talk about the outer packaging first, which of course is very similar to his brand. It's the beautiful black cardboard packaging, really sleek, really minimalistic, yet classic. And you can actually see this is a large foundation. So I wanna squash all of the rumors right now about that. I did hear a couple of times from my subscribers that they had heard that perhaps this, this was a really small bottle. This actually isn't. If you can see, like compared to my hand, it is almost as tall as my hand hand. So my hand is like a little bit peeking over. The bottles themselves look like this, so they are definitely not small. They are one fluid ounce each, and this is a glass packaging with a plastic white cap. There is metallic silver elements as well to this one, but I did pick up two shades just because I wasn't 100% sure. So I picked up 5N, which is light neutral. I also picked up 4C, which is also a light foundation, but described as a cool under tone. I decided to pick both just so that if I got one wrong, there'd be a chance for the other one. <laughs> On the back of Mario's package, it says Surreal Skin Foundation is my complexion masterpiece. I put my heart into this groundbreaking formula with the hope of not creating a barrier of foundation, but rather awakening the true infinite beauty that lies within. He does say that if you want more of a natural finish, you can apply with fingertips. So it's looking like brushes, sponges might give you a, for sure a medium and you can build it up to a full. I really can't wait to apply this to the face specifically for the finish because it is described on Sephora's website as a natural finish. Although Mario says that it was a radiant finish, he also said in another comment it was natural luminosity. So I have a feeling this one is going to be radiant. I do see, if you look real, real close, at the bottle, you can see some slight luminosity particles within it. It's gonna be very difficult for my camera to pick it up, but when you actually pick it up, you'll see what I mean. There's a definite luminosity ingredient in this product that you can actually see with your eyes. I do have a feeling it's going to be luminous of some kind, but we will see the intensity when we apply it. This foundation is 42 US dollars a piece. It is 55 Canadian dollars. And like I said, in store right now and online, there are 30 shades. Let's start by applying this guy. I do want to see, just on the back of my hand here, which shade is going to be better. <laughs> Let's find out. So this is the first one. Pretty close. That's 5N. And we'll try the other one. They're not going to be that much different. I'm going to go with the 4C because that one is, in my opinion, just slightly better of a match. I do think 5N I could pull off, but let's start with the 4C product. I did notice that this one is thicker for sure. So right off the bat, I would say it's definitely medium to full. This one, it's thicker, but yet has a runny component because it's running down my hand, if you can see that. So let's start with this brush applicator. I'm gonna use the It Cosmetics brush. This is the dual ended complexion brush. And we're going to see, I'm not going to go crazy with this one. I actually do feel like this one is going to be fuller coverage quickly. So Mario says that this one stands out in the industry because of his moisture grip technology, which is supposed to hydrate the skin and keep the skin moisturized all day. So it does claim to actually have a moisturizing component to this one. So it could be good for dry skin if this uh, <laughs> claim plays out for sure. But let's see how it goes here. So you can see this first layer, there's definitely some luminosity to it. I wouldn't say it's a full radiant finish, but it definitely has some nice luminosity. Granted, my skin had some luminosity already because I prepped it with the Magic Cream. If you guys are familiar with the Magic Cream, this has some luminosity, but it's not a ton. It just really does a great job of hydrating the skin. I know I was going to be doing a full wear test today, and it's actually like really cold here. We are going to my in-laws for a Christmas get together. 
So I know I'm gonna be facing that cold even for just a little bit when I get into my car. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure that my skin was super hydrated and super moisturized for prep. So this adds a little bit more. It does not add that much more though. So it's definitely a natural luminous finish, would not call it radiant. So I put like that much on my brush. You guys can see like literally next to nothing and I'm flicking it into the skin like that flicking. We flick first and then we press <laughs> with this brush. Around the eyes, I like to flip it over with this smaller section just to get around the eye area nice and steady. It is definitely going on smooth. I will give it that for sure. I wonder if it's going to set down any differently. I mean, so far, it's good. It's definitely good. I think if you prep your skin with a matte primer or if you prep your skin with something that doesn't have glow to it, you will see even less glow, obviously, compared to the stuff I've got going on here, only because I prepped it with Magic Cream. But like I said, Magic Cream is not a ton of glow. It gives you a nice bit of glow, but I wouldn't call it a lot. So this is adding a little bit more, going on really nicely, and I think this is a good shade match. So good job, Jenna. Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. I'm gonna go in one pump with the forehead here, not even, like a half pump. It really disperses evenly on the skin. And so far, I'm gonna double check here, but so far I'm not seeing any cling action. I think the next time I use it, I'll try it with a sponge. But this brush is doing a great job. So here is my skin with the first layer on. This is really nice and easy to put on. It didn't give me any grief when it came to application. You can see here, so one of the kind of indicators that I like to use is I do have a ton of redness on my face. I did put a little bit of concealer over top of it today, but if I were to just put a foundation on without concealer, I'll be able to see the coverage just based on the redness of my cheeks and how much gets covered. You can definitely see this is truly a medium to full. This is just the one layer and you can see parts of my redness is still a little bit coming through but not a ton. So for this, I'm going to put a little bit more and just place it on the cheeks. That's it. And we'll see if it builds because that is where the true test is. I also have a mole, if you can see that there. Sometimes that can be fully covered with a fat, with a full coverage. The brush is definitely helping with this because it's diffusing the product so well, so I feel like I have a lot of control. If you go for a denser brush, this will pack and build a lot quicker for you, so your coverage will build faster, in my opinion. This does a great job of diffusing the product amongst the bristles so that I don't over apply. I'm not a big fan of a full, full coverage finish, so it's nice to have some control with something like this. You don't need to have this exact brush, but having something that's very fluffy like this, and obviously the dual end is really nice just for like convenience, but this one is setting really nicely so far as well, so I do feel like it's got that nice luminosity there. If you decide to build it with coverage, so if you want to amp up to a full, you'll also see more radiance kick in because there is obviously more product and therefore more radiance as you build. So just keep that in mind. When you build more coverage, you'll also get more radiance. It actually looks really, really flawless on my cheeks really close up, but it's gathering slightly already into my dimple line. So we're not even quite fully set with this foundation and already I'm seeing some gathering. This is a very prominent dimple on my, on my face here. So I completely understand that. That's almost always something that happens. Just because I'm talking, if I was not talking, I think there'd be a greater likelihood that it wouldn't necessarily dry up in there right away. But because you're showing expression, right? I have a lot of acne products going on at my chin right now. So I'm noticing it's actually holding up really nicely. On my head, my head has got to be one of the driest spots right now. Considering the winter, I've noticed some actual dry skin on my forehead. It's looking pretty good, but I would say that that hydration, that prep with that magic cream really helped. I do want to set this with powder. I'm going to be using a powder that I love and trust, not a new product, just so we can see. This is the Flawless Skin Finish Powder from Charlotte Tilbury. And I'm going to put this over top only because I know it's gonna give a slight matte finish, so it's gonna bring down a teeny bit of this luminosity. For reference, I feel like this has more luminosity than Luminous Silk by Giorgio Armani. I think this one still has more, because that's truly, like in my opinion, a natural finish with a slight radiance to it, it's like a slight luminosity. This one has more than that, I would say. 
setting beautifully with this powder, but this is also a powder I can depend on. This is definitely looking really nice. You can see though on camera, it is still fairly glowy <laughs> considering. Now remember, I feel like I used one layer for most of my face. The cheeks have the most because of that buildability with the redness. I was trying to put another layer over top. So you can see here that it's looking really nice so far. Now I'm a glowy person, so I like this. If you are a matte foundation lover, I can already tell you this won't be for you. <laughs> This is nowhere near a matte foundation because it just has too much luminosity for that. When it comes to this, so far so good. Let's finish the rest of the makeup. For bronzer, we're going in with one of my favorite Makeup by Mario products, the Soft Sculpt transforming skin enhancer. This is the shade light medium. Using a new blush today that I just picked up from Sephora. So this is the Desert Rose from Makeup by Mario. So I just picked it up, let's use it today. Here we have the finished look, and this is actually a nice one, honestly. It's very elegant, it's very Jenna, which is kind of like my style of glowy. Love the simple eye too. I also use the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette today. So this is a lovely look. Like I said, I'm just going to a gathering today. I'll be doing check-ins throughout the day and letting you guys know how it wears, but so far so good. Going to be doing a full day wear test, so I'll keep you guys posted. Sometimes with all the studio lighting around, it's hard for my main camera to really zoom in. You can see what I mean. It's gathering a little bit in here. And of course, these are, you know, acne prone areas. So it's going to look, you know, not the best there. You can see how it looks right here. It's looking not too bad. I mean, it's skin with foundation on, not too bad at all. It's layering nicely. We don't have any bunching, anything like that. On the forehead, not too bad either. Okay, check-in number one. We are still in the car on our way, but it's been two hours since I freshly applied. Actually, more like four. <laughs> so let's zoom in on the skin a little bit. We're still holding down the fort here. We're looking really good. I think it hasn't changed much, much since first application. You can see on my face there, I do think a little bit of my own oils is starting to come through just slightly and it's settling really nicely. On the head here, same thing. Not budging so far. Now the culprits are usually my dimple, which has not gotten any worse. Around the eyes can break apart. That hasn't happened yet. The nose too looking pretty good also. Four hours later, this is a good check-in. All right, guys, the sun is setting. We are doing a quick check-in here. So you can see this is probably where or when I would um, powder. <laughs> we have a little bit of breakthrough here with oil. Definitely in the T-zone, up in here and here, here. Like, you can see there's some oil there. It's actually looking really nice, like on the skin. I would just powder here, you know, in the T-zone. Is there any breakdown yet? I don't see any breakdown yet. I still see, sorry for the up close and personal, I still see basically like the same, it's hard to tell with the sun setting, but everything seems to be wearing really nicely as of now. And we are now at eight hours of wear. So when I get home, cause we have a bit of a drive ahead of us, I'll be able to uh, check in at 12 hours and let you guys know how it's going. But honestly, it's holding up. Like right now, I would just powder and be happy with how it's looking. <laughs> All right, friends, I'm gonna make this the last check-in. We are now at the 13 hour mark. And you can see, so I'm in my studio again. I'm going to zoom in on my skin. 
but so far this has been nice. I honestly feel like I probably would have just powdered my skin around the 8 hour mark from the last check in. It was just like oily around the t-zone so it'll probably still be oily. I did not powder even though I wanted to but let's zoom in here. <laughs> you can see it's definitely shiny right in here. The non-oily parts aren't bad. I mean, it's breaking apart here. I was talking all day at my gathering, so there's a bit of some creasing there. And the blush is actually a blush and highlighter still there. I think the a bit of the bronzer might be gone. <laughs> my lipstick is for sure gone. And we might have a little bit of some dryness now collecting here. The dimple got a little bit worse, but we're now at 13 hours. So honestly, like, I am pretty impressed. I, my forehead's a little shiny too. It's like right here, like T-zone specifically. Let's see the eyeshadow because I'm kind of curious. This is the um, Ethereal Eyes. I feel like it also is doing really well. Normally around this time it would start to crease probably on my heaviest crease there with my hooded lids. So far it's good. I really like this one. I don't know about you guys, but I think this one is nice. I do think that you will need to love glowy foundations. I think that you'll need to be a little bit careful with applying, like I said, because it can build with the coverage quickly and then also along with that, the radiance. So it's something that you need to be sure you are applying light-handed at first to get a medium or a little bit of a glow, like a little bit of a luminosity, and then it sort of pushes that radiant finish. But really you have to get a full coverage to do that. When you stick to the medium coverage, I do think then it's not too bad. So I really like this one. The shade I wore all day was 4C which is this one. It's the cooler of the two. And I'm going to test out 5N as well and just see, but they're so close. So either of them would have worked for me, I think, today. Well, that's a wrap on this review. Harvey is here to say goodbye with you guys as well. I hope this review was helpful for you in deciding if this foundation is right for you, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys!